It really is, Wolf. And if you look at what happened in these accidents, you can understand why they're focusing so much on this idea that maybe this has something to do with human error. Look at this train as it's coming around the corner here and crashing here. This is not something where the investigators are looking so much at just this highly precise, very elaborate machinery of the train. What they're looking at is not the technology of the tracks. They're looking, first of all, at look at the sheer speed of it, which means they're looking at the hand on the throttle, the man who's running this thing, the conductor. So what do we know about that? We know that one of the reasons they're so curious about this is because he apparently bragged before about the idea that he could drive very, very quickly with these trains. That may be an issue. We know that Spanish news agencies are reporting that this train was supposed to be doing about 50 miles an hour as it came around here. Instead, it may have been going twice that speed. Look at this. We've split this in half, and we've slowed one of these down by half time. Look at the difference that would have happened there. This train is the one that's coming around extra fast. Look, it's already crashing at this point, whereas if it had been traveling at half that speed, it would be that much short of even reaching that point. So this is the thing they're looking at to see if it really was fundamentally human error here in what made this happen. Could it be something wrong with the machinery? Yes, Wolf, but right now, it just doesn't look that way to some of the investigators. That's why they're looking at that conductor so hard. Yeah, human error. Uh, it's also being considered uh, the possible cause of two major airplane crashes uh, here in the United States, in San Francisco and in New York, in recent days and weeks. Why is that? Uh, same reason, Wolf. It's the nature of the crash. In the Asiana air crash, for example, the National Transportation Safety Board has concluded that in perfectly clear weather and broad daylight, this plane landed way short of the runway, and the tail and undercarriage struck the seawall. We've had no reports that the pilots were having equipment troubles. We know that one of them was relatively inexperienced, and we know that they called to abort the landing just seconds before impact. All of that says, look at the man more than the machine. In the Southwest flight, which we've heard so much about, the NTSB now says just about 30 feet above the ground, this plane's nose was still pointed up at that point, just a little bit, and it didn't have to be a whole lot, but pointed up enough that it was just a couple of degrees upward. That's proper so that the heavier gear down here lands first. But instead, right before it landed, according to the NTSB, what happened is that nose shifted from up in about four seconds to a slight downward angle, and that's what made this weaker gear up front hit first. Again, there is a way that you can explain all of this through weird air drafts or equipment failure, but it's not conclusive as early on. They're looking very hard at all of the humans involved to see if that's what caused these failures. Wolf? The S NTSB will uh, obviously be investigating these uh, crashes for many months to come. Tom, thanks.